so much for joining me. My name is Tracy, if you haven't been here before. And this is a DIY upcycling channel where we take pre-owned items, breathe new life into them, and create fun, edgy pieces, wearable art, things like that. And today, what I want to do is make a long statement necklace out of a fabric heart, and it'll be a collage of just scraps and found treasures that I have around my sewing room. So let's get going. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is just make a paper heart pattern. Mine is five inches across and five and a half inches tall. And all I did here was just take a piece of paper. This is just copy paper. Folded it in half. Drew out my heart, just half of the heart on the fold. And cut it out. Okay, so I've cut into this already. This was a pillow cover from Amazon. I'll put a link in my description if you're interested. It had birds on it, sparrows, and I used those on a pair of jeans. But now I can use the rest of it to make a really cool looking necklace. Now I need to cut and trace out two hearts, one for the front and one for the back. And for the first, for the front side, I want this pink flower. It's the only one on left on this pillow cover. And I'm going to try to get as much of that as I can and trace this. So that's the one I just traced. And I kind of like this area here. It has a little botanicals, a little bit of botanical and some words. So I'll position this and trace around it. And now I'm just cutting them out. So now I want to put a really thin layer of lace over top. And I have this old wedding dress that my girlfriend gave me quite a while back. I think it was her mother's. And she gave me permission to cut it up and do as I please. And I used it on a lot of projects and I'm going to use it on this. Okay, so now I'm just taking a piece of that lace and I'm laying it over top of the heart where I want it. And I am not going to try to cut this lace the size of the heart. I'm going to cut it a little bigger than the heart and trim it when I'm done sewing. That'll be a lot easier than trying to match that up. So now I'm just going to stick a few pins in there. Now I'm just going to take it to my machine, both these pieces, and stay close to the edge and get that lace sewn on. I will use my gold colored thread and a fairly small straight stitch. Now I'm just going to trim that excess lace off. Now I want to add two little loops that will come down at the bottom and come in between these two heart pieces here in order to attach jewelry and things like that. So what I'm using is, this is just fringe, and I have about a one inch piece and I am going to lay my first one right here facing in, not out, because we will sew this and turn it right side out. So that will make the loop stick up, but I need to put it down right now. And what I'm going to do, since this is so tiny, I'm going to stick a little tiny piece of glue there to hold it in place and then I will sew over it. But this is just, these tiny things are hard for my, sometimes hard for my big fingers to handle. <laughs> okay, so that's right at the edge right here. I will sew over it eventually. And now I want to do the same down here with a little loop.
So there are my little loops. And this happens to be my front side, but it does not matter what side you put it on. Now, I want to put a pretty piece of jewelry in the center here. And I have this clip-on earring. I believe it's vintage. And I am just going to clip off this back here. And I'm just using my big wire cutters. Now, I want to put it pretty much in the center. This seems pretty big right now, but once we sew it and have the seam allowance, it'll shrink up quite a bit. And what I like to do now, if you can see closely here, I have little areas where I can stick a needle in and sew that. So I will probably sew it in maybe one, two, three, four areas around it. And I will use gray colored thread. I like to match the color of thread to the hardware I'm sewing, not the fabric. And I don't like using metallic silver because it seems to break easily. So I'm using gray. And my thread is just good old all-purpose Coates and Clark brand thread. Now I want to sew the front and back together. So I'm going to put it together, right sides together. Trim a little bit. <laughs> and I'm going to pin this all the way around, but I am not going to pin about two and a half inches of it. I want to be able to turn this right side out. So I'll get that pinned. Now I'm going to sew this together and I will use a quarter inch seam allowance, a fairly small straight stitch, and I will start at this pin, sew all the way around and stop at this pin. Okay, there's my opening. Now I am just going to trim this up a little bit and then I'm going to carefully snip up to that stitch line whenever you have a curve you want to make little notches so that when you turn it right side out it lays nice and smooth now I'm going to turn it right side out Once I get it straightened out pretty good here, I am going to my ironing board and I'm just going to give it a good press. Okay, so now this open side, I'm going to tuck in those raw edges and give that a good press too. Okay, so here's my little heart. And I took apart a throw pillow that I had laying around here. Nothing safe around here. <laughs> and I am just going to take a little bit of the stuffing and stuff that and give it a little dimension. How cute is that? Okay, so now I want to do an invisible stitch, get the side sewn up, but what I'm going to do first is just put a couple pins in there so that it doesn't fight me when I'm trying to sew it. Now to do my invisible stitch, I am just going to slip my, I'm starting at the bottom of the opening, I'm going to slip my needle in there underneath and bring it up so that the knot is hidden inside here. And then I'm just going to catch one side a little bit of the fabric pull my thread through 
This is also called a ladder stitch because at this point where I brought that thread through, I'm going straight across to the opposite side like a ladder rung and I'm catching a little piece over here. Okay, so now I'm on this side of the opening. I am going to take my needle and go through that fold where it's invisible, maybe about a quarter of an inch or eighth of an inch long. Pull that through. Okay, and so now I'm on this side. I want to come over here and catch a little bit of the fabric over here. And now that I'm on this side, I'm going to go through the little fold on this side where you can't see the thread. And then go straight across like a ladder rung catch a piece of this and continue that all the way down to the end. Now I'm all the way down at the end. I am just going to tie this off and clip it close to the knot. With all this fabric and lace, the knot won't really be seen. Okay, so now I want to play with, I have tons of scrap jewelry and beads and things like that. And now I want to add some to this heart and I'm going to play with some of my jewelry making supplies. I don't have a ton and you really don't need a ton. Basically two small sort of needle nose pliers and a wire cutter. Now typically these come in a set of three, but I actually like using my big old wire cutters from the garage. But I'll put a link to as much of this stuff as I can in my description. And then I also have these little, they're for jewelry making. Mine are silver in color. And they have kind of like a little head on them, like a, a small little nail. And um, that's what I'm going to use to add the beads to the bottom of my heart. Okay, so my little loop is barely visible. Remember that little loop we added to the bottom of the heart? But I'm going to do my best to try to stick this wire through. Okay, so it went through. And now I'm going to take, so my two pliers, one is rounded like this, and one is more blunt at the end. I'm taking the more rounded one and I am just going to round that. I hope you can see this. So that it's on the loop like that. Okay, now this has that little nail head type thing at the bottom. I'm going to clip that off so my beads slide up here easily. Now this is a spacer that goes between beads. And you can buy spacers, but a lot of junk jewelry has spacers in between the beads, and that's where I get a lot of mine, just from scrap parts. And so now I'm just going to add some beads. Okay, so now I'm going to clip this off maybe half an inch above that last bead. You know, I am not an expert at this, but I do know enough that I sold my items and nobody ever complained that I wasn't an expert jewelry maker. Now I am going to take my rounded pliers and I am going to round this end so that the beads don't fall off. I know some of you jewelry makers are experts at this, but that's good enough. That'll keep my beads on. Now, I have this little earring, 
really cute. It has like a cherub, a cross, and a heart. And I am going to clip the, the earring back off. And I'm going to add a jump ring to that and attach it to that little loop that we made like that. Now, I buy jump rings. They don't come like this. I, I add things to this kind of a hodgepodge, but it was an assorted case of jump rings. And I'll try to put a link to that in my description as well. And they come in, in different sizes, different colors, which is great. And I am just taking one little jump ring and I am going to open that up and I am going to turn it sideways, catch my little cherub, catch that loop, turn it sideways to close it. How cute is that? Okay, so to this loop here, I'm going to do a very similar thing. Take one of my wires and I'm going to slip it through and make a loop. Then I'm just going to add my beads and spacers. So here's what the heart and doodads are looking like right now. And now I just want to attach it to a necklace so that it can be worn. And I have this, it's just a thrifted necklace from St. Vinny's. And I am taking a jump ring, a little silver jump ring, opening it up. Grabbing the top of my heart here, attaching it somewhere onto the necklace. Okay, it's all done and so beautiful. I am going to give you a close up here in a second. I just want you to see kind of the length. Um, what if you paired it? These are from St. Vinny's too, $1.99 a piece. And they're kind of the heavier, they're not real pearls, but they're nice. Layer them with some more pearls. How gorgeous is that? Okay, I'm going to bring it in and let you see a little closer.